Welcome to the next project. Today I'm building a workbench with a butcher block style top out of construction grade lumber for about $125. It can still be done. Let's start the next project. This video is for those of us who have worked on trash cans and chunk of plywood or a solid corridor, maybe upgraded to sawhorses. But in this video, we're going to make a little bit better bench for about $125 plus accessories. As with any task, we need to do a little bit of prep work. Here I'm uh, protecting a nice floor in a garage and building some sawhorses, or I think we're going to term them saw ponies. Basically, they're just risers to get all of the work that we're going to do uh, for the top itself up off the floor. And in hopes of making a nice smooth top, we need to make sure these risers are level across the top between the two. There's a few ways that I went about doing this. I ran string in a cross pattern. I ran levels on each. I used my eyeballs to sight it and also a laser and measured quickly um, for accuracy. And here I'm taping the string to the edges. Yes, you could use nails or something. And the trick here is if one corner is up or down, the strings in the center will either gap or push on each other. Here's the laser. I'm quickly going through it. Another thing you have to make sure of is that the top of the two boards are true to each other. You don't want them to have humps or waves or bows or anything weird. They need to be straight and true. Here we're uh, culling the herd. We're going through all the lumber that I picked up for this job. Choosing the best pieces for the bench top itself. The other pieces will be used for the legs and the cross members underneath. With the top pieces all squared on one end, I started some measurements. I'm going to cut away three inches on either end of this whole slab and inset from that another three inches in either end, which leaves me with a 12 inch on center spacing for what will end up being the clamping to hold this together during glue up. This is a simple drilling guide that will be clamped to the table of the drill press. It will help ensure that the uh, spade bit that I'm using is hitting in the center of all the boards. The 12 inch on center marks that we put on those boards, I'll be able to line it up and punch them all in exactly the same place. So when we get ready to clamp, all of the clamping that we'll be using will work perfectly. We're getting all the clamping holes drilled. It's going pretty well. I've got myself a little guide set up on the drill press so I can uh, always drill in the center of the board and it has a little centering line so I always hit my mark um, as far as where to put it space-wise on the length of the board which is the lines I drew across all of the boards um, 12 inch on center and then my guide at the drill press centers the drill bit on the board itself so I just punch them out eight holes per board ah uh, my 20 boards I think is what I'm using what's that 160 holes is that right, math? I don't know. A lot, a lot of holes. Let's continue the next project. All of our boards have been culled and we have drilled all of our clamping holes and all. Now I am struggling to run all these through a planer that is just laying on the floor making a racket. I actually had a couple neighbors walk by and go, what are you doing in there? They didn't understand. I was just making a bunch of noise. 
So, uh, you know, now there are a bunch of for sale signs in the neighborhood. I guess they don't like noise. Okay, we've got all the boards uh, culled, I guess it is. Um, lines drawn for all the clamping holes. All the clamping holes drilled. Um, cut a French cleat edge, a bevel on the far, the back um, board. And that will be so I can push this up against the bench, uh, the wall and drop it into a cleat and it will kind of lock it to a wall without actually bolting this to the wall. Then I ran all of them through the planer, twice on one side and a single pass on the second side, just to make sure they're all pretty much uniform uh, width throughout the length of each board. I uh, had priced getting like uh, Bessie or similar style parallel clamps to clamp this together. Figured I'd need one about every foot. That would be eight um, clamps. Uh, figure 50 bucks at a minimum for a three foot clamp. Maybe $60 is more accurate. That's a lot of money. That's more than I have on the rest of the bench build altogether. So we're using threaded rod and nuts on either end and uh, drinking straws, the jumbo size drinking straws over the middle of the threaded rod that run through the, the body of the top. That's so I can get the rods out later. There's a dog barking in the background. Hey, we're working in the wild. Well, let's continue the next project. For a moment, I thought about buying parallel clamps to put this project together, but the realization that parallel clamps are insanely expensive changed my mind. A pair of parallel clamps is about $120, and I'd need four pairs, so that'd be $480. So I'm going to use threaded rod, coupling nuts, and fender washers for about $50. I'm not considering the expense for clamping as part of my total build cost, because if I bought parallel clamps, you wouldn't consider that part of your bench top costs. I did choose to go with threader rod. This is 5 16 inch rod, and I'm cutting it off to three foot lengths. You could use a hacksaw for this, or if you have a really good karate action, you could try that. But I used a little cutoff tool, and I've got the coupling nut, a jam nut, and a couple washers on there. And I've also picked up a pack of uh, jumbo drinking straws that will slide onto the threaded rod. And this is going to keep the glue from bonding the rod into the holes. Clever. I'm adding a little duct tape to the top of the risers that I'm going to be using to glue on. This is just to help keep any squeeze out from bonding the top to those panels. I'm using a 3 8 inch paint roller to apply tight bond and just slathering it on, trying to get plenty in there. Stacking up the pieces, squeezing them together as I push them into place, and putting the threaded rods through the holes. And of course, you know, you have to give it a little persuasion, have to tap it with a hammer here and there. But overall, it went really well. Well, we've got the bench top all glued together. Uh, used a 3 8 inch nap roller on an extension handle and just basically painted the tight bond original glue onto the surfaces, flipped them up, um, got them all sandwiched together, used the threaded rod, which was 5 16 inch threaded rod, cut to three foot lengths, used coupling nuts and fender washers on either side, tightened it all down, uh, put a couple uh, two by four calls, one on either end, clamped it to my, uh, we'll call them sawhorses, they're just, uh, I don't know what they are, two by sixes that run across to get everything up off the floor so I can clamp it together. Uh, sawhorses, uh, yeah, whatever, I don't know what they are. So this needs to dry for at least a day, but it'll be next weekend when I get back to it. So let's get on to that and start the next project. Now that the top is all glued together, it is time to get it level. I'm using some 2x4s that are nice and straight, some MDF and some other 2x4s to make a routing sled. And I have to stress, use good quality straight material for this or you'll ruin your top. 
It's time to start leveling the top now that uh, everything is cleaned up. I've got my side rails on. Um, they are level end to end and true to plane of the top as close as I could get it. I checked it like three different ways. Um, so it's as good as I can get it. Another thing to realize is that the rails have to be true across the top of those. If they're wavy, then I'm just cutting a wave into the top of the bench. We don't want that. So I've taken a little bit of time to straighten the top of the outside rails that I'm gonna use for my router sled. Um, that, there's my router. I'm using a two inch wide flat bottom um, two flute or two cutter bit. And that, I'll show a picture of it and a homemade temporary uh, routing planing sled that will ride just on top of the outside rails uh, about a half an inch off of the top of the bench. Whew, that's a lot. Let's get making wood chips. When I first started planning this project, I was gonna make the top in three or four separate sections and run the whole thing through my planer again. I don't have an industrial planer and those separate slabs would have been really heavy also and it would have been a problem. So I decided to go with the router planing method and it worked really well. It actually took me 22 minutes, as we're seeing here, of fun, 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 to make one pass across the top. That was fun. First pass of using the router as a planer on the top of the bench went really well. I took off less than a sixteenth of an inch, close to it, but not quite. Um, and this gave me my initial level so I can see where there are low spots. I will be going back with a second pass on the top. I'll probably only do one pass on the bottom just to level it out, get rid of any extra glue drips that are down there. Just on the bottom so I have a good mounting surface for where the legs and future cabinetry um, tie into. But for the top, I'll give it a second pass just to catch the few other little uh, shallow spots that are probably 32nd of an inch or a hair more than that uh, low. And uh, it'll be ready for final uh, leveling and finishing after the legs and everything are on when it's right side up again. So let's hit it again with a second pass. I probably won't show you because it's just more of the same, but it's time for me to get back to it. When I was planning this project, I decided not to make the legs tie directly into the top with a mortise and tenon, like you see so many other builders do. I wanted the top to be removable for a couple reasons. One, for future leveling of ease. Maybe I need to flip the top over um, and use it the other way. Also, if I ever move again, I want this to be uh, almost manageable. Total weight of a bench. The top alone is around 200 to 220 pounds as it is right now. So it's very heavy. The base will probably be another 200 pounds when it's all done, including future cabinetry that'll go into it. I'm trying to make a product that can come apart into almost manageable pieces. Here we're putting the legs sections together, I'm really kind of building in a, a mortise into the leg that the cross pieces will then glue and screw into. Now we're putting the base together, one side at a time, and squaring the legs to the rail that will actually screw to the bottom of the bench. The blue tape on the bench there is just to help keep me sanitary, keep a little bit of extra glue off the bottom of the bench. Squaring everything, gluing and inserting the other cross piece for the leg assembly, the base assembly. It is glued and then also screwed. I use some construction screws to put it all together. 
With one side done, I used it as a template or a guide to put the other side together so they do match up. Now we're putting screws in to hold the, uh, the leg assembly, the base, to the top itself. I've marked on the bottom of the bench for alignment. Did some measuring, always use a measure, 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 measure. Putting in some other cross pieces to hold the two first leg assemblies to each other. It's a really pretty simple assembly. And again, I'm building it so it can come apart in the future if needed. And it will also be so heavy that it really shouldn't go anywhere since I'm not using a mortise and tenon of leg to top necessarily. So I think it's going to be safe. This bench is heavy, 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 heavy. Well, I've been uh, working through this design, I'm keeping my mind on some issues that typical benches have like side to side movement or front to back movement or some rotational movement as you use the bench. And this is base related stuff quite often. This bench will get some upgrades in the near future, a back, a base like a shelf to it and sides which will all help take care of these stability issues. Other things I'm going to do right away will be put on some casters and some cabinetry will be coming soon. All right, it's time to take this and flip it over here so it's right side up. Basically taking a capsized vessel and turning it right side up again. Well, maybe not again for the first time. This is at least a two person job and my dog refused to help me. So here we go. Wish me luck. Got my back brace on. Fingers crossed, let's get it going. That was heavy. Went well. Now I'm going to use uh, a little belt sander and hit the top, knock the fuzzies off, and it will be ready for any top finish work that you would want to do. I'm going to fill a few little knots in the top of some epoxy. I don't know if it'll be today, it'll be soon. It's also going to get some wheels put on it so I can move it around. It, uh, it will slide on the concrete, I'm sure. There's a nice smooth floor, but not everybody has that. Well, let's wrap up this project. Well, the total damage was $117, so basically $120 to build this bench. If you're interested in building a bench, take the time to figure out what it is you need a bench for and make a bench that will help you achieve your goals. Don't just copy me or anybody else, but figure out what you need in a bench. It doesn't have to be super fancy. It can be very simple, in fact. I would like to thank everybody for watching, for hanging out with me, for uh, rolling along through this project. If you find something you like, you know, hit the thumbs up button. Please leave a comment, ring the bell, subscribe if you haven't already. Take care of those around you and yourself. And until next time, take care. Bye.